2nd of August, 1839. I have arrived at the village of Altstadt. It's a haven in the midst of a vast forest and the last stop before my final destination, Castle Brennenburg. It's late in the evening and the outrider, who has been with the coach since Bremen, advised me to wait until morning before I venture further. I've arranged for a bed at Der Müller, the village's only inn, and am now waiting for the sun to rise. I try to sleep, but as I close my eyes, I see the men who fell victim in London. My fear and shame forces me to witness the same scenes over and over. They are dead because of me. Well, technically, Daniel, they're dead because a monster killed them. Now, essentially, you. You know, I think, I think I'll be okay. I'll be safe up here. I don't have to go out. I have enough moldy bread to survive here. Let's, let's go have some moldy bread. Anyone else want moldy bread? Moldy bread's good for you. There you go. Cut it up. Smooth some butter on it. Mmm, it's delicious. In fact, how about I invent toast? I'll invent toast in this timeline. There. Very soon that will become toast. Okay, more tinder boxes that I don't need. And kind of just exploring. Quick exploring. Let's see. Okay, lad denum. Okay, that's obviously acid. Didn't I have a pot? Oh wait, no, that blew up. Okay, so I probably have to find a new pot. of August 1839. I feel like I have fled the world and all its worries. Brennenburg is a majestic creation perched upon a forest-clad hill with towers reaching well above even the highest pine trees. Following the winding road leading to the gates gives the impression of discovering something forgotten, as if journeying with Marco Polo to the hidden Xanadu. Alexander, the Baron, is a peculiar but gracious man. He seems well versed in worldly matters and is not at all as eccentric as I assumed. My room is exquisite and I'm confident that no hotel for miles could even hope to match it. As the sun sets on Brennenburg, its fairy tale varnish turns to an eerie gloom. 
Alexander's strange servants are never far away. They are a quiet lot, and their behavior could only be described as skulking. Alexander seems pleased by my presence. As he puts it, it seems like I got here just in time. Okay. Is he safe? Well, it's for his own good. There's plenty of oil now. Oh god. Okay, glass jar. Find here, no. One of these I can take. No. Okay, can I keep going? scariest part so far. some sort. at all.
toast ready. Back in the hiding place. Back in the hiding hole. and I'll break them. Okay, so someone went to a burning house, apparently. Not exactly the smartest move you can make, but still. 4th of August, 1839. The nightmares woke me in the early morning, and for a moment I forgot where I was. Shortly after, there was a knock on my door. Alexander had heard my screams and asked me to join him in the parlor. As we drank our tea, Alexander began to tell me what he knew. It seems like the orb I found casts a long and dark shadow. It's not only a powerful item, but a dangerous one. Simply by touching it, you invoke the powers within, and if you are too weak to control it, it will devour you. The shadow is a sluggish thing lagging behind the wielder, killing anyone or anything in its path to reclaim the orb. I said I didn't care about its powers and that I should throw it away. Alexander advised against this as I'd still be a part of the path to the orb and eventually suffer death. Having the orb, I would at least have the chance to fight back when the time came. I asked Alexander what he meant 
when he said he could protect me. And he answered, the things can be done, but at a price. <laughs>